Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Pakistan. Uh, this vlog is in English and it is for the English speaking world. Uh, my next vlog will be in Urdu. Assalamu alaikum and greetings to everybody. Uh, if you're concerned about your personal security and doesn't matter which part of the world you live in and you care about world peace and uh, are worried about nuclear conflict, then please listen to this. This is not a clickbait. And you will thank me after 40 minutes. Pakistan, the world's uh, fifth most populous country with an estimated 243 million people and a nuclear armed state is on the brink of civil war and anarchy under a brutal fascist totalitarian military backed regime since April 2022. Uh, this is because of attempts by the Pakistan Army Chief General Asim Munir and his generals and his ISI led by General Nadeem Anjum. Uh, and the military-backed regime to eliminate and or to assassinate uh, Pakistan's most popular political leader, known for his crusade against corruption and for the rule of law, former Prime Minister Imran Khan. Uh, there are moves to ban his political party, uh, the Tariq and Saf, the movement for justice, and scuttle the holding of free and fair elections as per law and constitution and as mandated by the Supreme Court of Pakistan earlier this month. My name is Heather Mehdi, and I am the convener of the Pakistan Democracy Forum, an overseas uh, forum for Pakistanis, an overseas uh, forum of Pakistanis fighting against uh, the fascist totalitarian military-backed regime in Pakistan for a free democratic Pakistan under rule of law and for equal access to rights, privileges, for all citizens of Pakistan, rich and poor. I'm also a regular independent commentator and writer on Pakistan's current uh, political affairs, on geopolitics and regional and global geopolitics, and I'm based in Toronto, Canada. I'm a former second generation Pakistan Army officer. I've served in Balochistan, in the interior of Sindh. I've served on the Kashmir border. I understand the military mind, and I've been involved in politics since 1981 when I left the army under protest of General Zia's martial law. This message is for the leaders and people of North America, Europe, Asia, and Africa. It is for the United Nations Secretary General. It is for all international organizations who raise their voice against human rights abuses, political victimization, custodial torture, and politically motivated murder by state institution, as is happening in Pakistan since April 2022. It is for legislators, senators, congressmen and congresswomen, policymakers, opinion leaders, civil rights activists, media houses, and all freedom-loving peoples of the world. Please pay heed to my message because the consequences of anarchy, civil war in Pakistan will certainly engulf the entire globe and most certainly the Middle East and South Asia. Here's what's happening in Pakistan. Two assassination attempts have been made by the military and their puppet-backed government against former Prime Minister Imran Khan. The first in October 2022, when he was leading a protest rally and suffered four gunshot wounds from which he is still recovering. 87 bullets were fired at him from three different directions. The second happened a few days ago on 18th March when he appeared for a court hearing in Islamabad after journeying for 400 kilometers from his uh, home base in Lahore. And his convoy was ambushed by police, paramilitary rangers, and plainclothes uh, people from the ISI, the Army's Inter, uh, Inter-Services Intelligence, as he was entering the court judicial complex. Pakistan's most renowned investigative journalist, was Arshad Sharif, was killed in Kenya in what was first called a case of mistaken identity, later on subsequently found out by a fact-finding team of Pakistani senior investigating officers from the uh, Intelligence Bureau and the Federal Investigation Agency, who concluded after one month's investigation that it was a targeted assassination. This was also confirmed subsequently by Pakistan's brutal, very cruel, sadistic Interior Minister Rana Sanaula. The report uh, clearly showed links between Arshad's murder, the ISI, and with strong circumstantial evidence that the orders came straight from then Army Chief General Kamar Javed Bajwa, who retired on 29 November, and his ISI Chief, who is also the current ISI Chief, General Nadeem Anjum, and his Director General in, in, Internal um, Affairs, Major General Faisal Nasir. Ashut had been investigating corruption allegations and charges against the former 
uh, absconding Pakistani Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif, who was criminally convicted and is now absconding and living in UK, uh, and uh, the elder brother of the current Pakistani Prime Minister Shabaz Sharif, who himself and his son and his nephew are involved in cases amounting to rupees 20 billion in corruption charges and money laundering. Uh, he was also uh, investigation cor investigating corruption charges against General Kamar Javed Bajwa, whose family later on we have found have amassed wealth of rupees 12 billion uh, rupees. And Bajwa himself uh, estimated embezzlement and corruption leads up to two billion dollars. This is unconfirmed. The report clearly shows a direct link that the orders came from General Bajwa down to the ISE operatives in Karachi who got these cases registered against Atri Sharif, hounded him out of uh, Pakistan, hounded him off to Dubai, and then was killed in a targeted assassination attempt uh, about which investigations are still ongoing. Just to add that the uh, foreign, uh, the interior minister who also confirmed that this is a targeted assassination has also uh, reportedly uh, from various sources and the security agencies here uh, indicate that there is a targeted hit out at me uh, to eliminate me in Toronto, Canada. So again, in October 2022, a 75-year-old senator of uh, the Pakistan Tariq and South, Prime Minister Imran's party, Senator Azza Samati, was illegally abducted, subsequently charged for sedition, brutally tortured, physically abused in custody for criticizing the then army chief, General Bajwa, in a tweet on Twitter. In January this year, the Scottish Parliament took notice and named General Bajwa as the prime cause behind this brutal custodial torture and called upon Pakistani authorities to act in accordance with the rule of law and uphold their obligations under the international treaties. IPU Committee on Human Rights admitted Senator Azam Sawati's case at its 170th session in Geneva this year in January and February and named again General Retired Kamar Bajwa, former Army Chief, and Major General Faisal Naseeb, the Director General Counterintelligence, and ISI Islamabad Sector Commander Brigadier Fahim Raza as the persons behind General Sawati's abduction, illegal confinement, custodial torture. Earlier in August 2022, Prime Minister Imran Khan's then Chief of Staff, Dr. Shabazz Gill, also a professor of business, a U.S. resident, and a lecturer at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, was again illegally abducted on the roadside, brutally tortured, physically abused for nearly two months before being released on bail. He still suffers huge, massive psychological scars from his torture. The charge against him was that in a current affairs program on TV, he stated that he did not believe that the rank and file of the Pakistan army would obey illegal orders. Both Senator Sawati and Professor Gill were charged under Pakistan's notorious sedition laws dating back to the British colonial days of 1860, carrying the death sentence. Recently, in the last 11 months, over two dozen journalists have been similarly arrested, tortured, harassed, released, waylaid, beaten up by police and people in plain clothes. Several thousand political workers have been illegally arrested on trumped up charges of disturbing the peace when political rallies were being held. Just recently, in the last 48 hours, 500 political workers of the Pakistan Tehreek and Saab have been arrested and no one knows where they are and under what charges. Over 5,000 police raids have been conducted into people's houses, most of them without warrant. Women, children, girls, young girls have been beaten up. Massive abuses of human rights have been inflicted on women, children and unarmed civilians. Last week, the Pakistani Punjab police and paramilitary rangers illegally attempted to arrest Prime Minister Imran Khan for on a warrant asking him to be presented in court on 18th August, for which he had given an undertaking to the president of the Lahore High Court Bar Association that he will appear, yet the police attempted, and there was an all-out pitched battle with tear gas and canisters and women and unarmed civilians beaten up. On the same day, 
that PM Imran was traveling to Islamabad 18th March from Lahore. His house was again raided by the same Punjab police and paramilitary rangers and in an attempt to harass his family and the people who were in his house, his wife was all alone, unarmed. No female police accompanied this police raid and they wanted to plant evidence of guns and so-called Molotov cocktails, which they then showcased in plastic bottles, not knowing that Molotov cocktails and plastic bottles do not explode. They also showed uh, what was was supposed to be beer bottles, which later turned out to be malt, and police uh, men were seen drinking the same malt that they had said was alcohol in Imran's house. It was a pathetic attempt to to uh, plant false evidence against him. Reportedly, over 2,200 army officers have resigned since April 9, 2022 after the military-backed regime removed the government of Prime Minister Imran Khan in what is now called a constitutional coup, masterminded by then Army Chief General Kamar Javed Bajwa. Reportedly, thousands of officers who have voiced opinions against the actions of General Bajwa when he did this constitutional coup have been summarily dismissed from Pakistan Army without any benefits. Several hundred both retired and serving army officers have been illegally abducted, imprisoned and brutally tortured in ISI manned safe houses converted into prisons. These included a very highly decorated officer, a lieutenant colonel, a full colonel from the special services group, Colonel Naveed Khan, who has been under arrest and tortured since August 2022 and was released three days ago after I made this news public in one of my vlogs. Many senior retired generals have had their retirement privileges and benefits and pensions withdrawn as they publicly criticized the military coup against PM Imran Khan. The current army chief who replaced Bajwa uh, on the 29th of November, General Asim Munir, uh, while in my opinion unconstitutional, illegal because he had retired on 27th uh, November, while the army chief was still, the previous army chief was still uh, in service on 29 November, has continued this reign of terror uh, that has in, has uh, uh, infected Pakistan. Let me tell you the context why this is happening. In the 26, in the 65 years to date, from 1958 to 200, uh, 2023, the Pakistan Army, the Pakistan Muslim League of Nawaz Sharif the corrupt Pakistani Prime Minister and the elder brother of the current corrupt Pakistani Prime Minister Shabazz Sharif and the Pakistan People's Party uh, headed by Asif Zardari, the father of Bilawal Bhutto Zardari, commonly known as Mr. 10%, have ruled Pakistan for 61 and a half years of the 65 years since 1958. Imran Khan has only administered Pakistan for three and a half years. Between these three institutions, the Pakistan Army, the Pakistan Muslim League of Nawaz Sharif and the People's Party of Asif Zardari, known as Mr. 10%, there has been an orgy of massive kleptocratic and plutocratic loot and plunder which has taken place in Pakistan. All the civilian governments which were dismissed, uh, either the Muslim League government or the People's Party government by their own presidents, were dismissed on charges of corruption, misgovernance, misrule. The army generals who took over, Ayub Khan, Yahya Khan, Musharraf, Zia, all took over on the pretext that the civilian government was corrupt and they rode in trying to fix things. The model was very simple for the military. The military rode in as saviors, acquired immense powers and control over state resources, taking millions of acres of government land, accruing to themselves massive authority, changing the constitution, giving themselves unparalleled privileges and benefits uh, and subsidies to the military-backed uh, uh, business, uh, businesses that they had set up. And then they used these lands to hand out plots to army officers as perks, privileges, benefits from majors up to generals. They also became the largest business conglomerate masquerading their business enterprises as a means of social welfare. In fact, using this to acquire massive wealth at the senior level of the generals. They also resorted to brazen and blatant corruption, gun running, drug smuggling, and coercive mafia-like tactics to take money from business people, uh, people, from business houses, which were then put in 
unaudited military uh, bank accounts managed by military officers completely out of the purview of the government and and any audit is and they were called command funds formerly they were called black funds because that they were that's what they were from this senior military officers bought houses bought cars paid for their children's education overseas it was a uh, it, it still is brazen loot and plunder of the nation resources to prolong this root loot and plunder these military generals co-opted the same corrupt civilian politicians as part of their government to give them a civilian legitimate face and co-opted them and then this loot and plunder continued in tam in tandem this cohabitation between the two the corrupt politicians served both well the politicians acquired even more power now they had they were answerable to no one because it was a military dictator uh, they belonged uh, they were part of as their government and even if there was a parliament it was pliant and this loot and plunder continued to further this ability and not to be held accountable both the military regimes and the corrupt politicians which followed them after the military left in a highly questionable very rigged election process they weakened all state institution especially the judiciary so they could not be held accountable and the police and the bureaucracy and the election commission and a com a com appointed really corrupt and incompetent people so they could be used former prime minister nawaz sharif and shabash sharif his younger brother who remained chief minister of the province of punjab for 15 years and prime minister benazir bhutto and her husband asif zardari who became president and their party which ruled which currently also rules the sindh province have stuffed the entire executive branch of the government and the provinces with weak corrupt compromised and compliant officers executive judges police people and and you, you name it as a former prime minister benazir bhutto who people in the west think was a very honest lady famously remarked when she approved the appointment of a very senior government official saying why had she chosen him responded he is corrupt hence compromised hence pliable hence he will listen to me both the sharifs and asif zardari and and the bhuttos now want to foist their children as their political heirs bilawal bhutto the son of asif zardari and benazir has never done a day's decent work in his life is a third rate uh, academic uh, an extremely corrupt individual in his own right so is maryam safdar the daughter of pakistan's absconding criminal corrupt prime minister living in uk niece of the current pakistani prime minister shahbaz sharif with the same credentials absolutely useless not done a day's work in their life let me go back to the military of the annual budget last year 20 uh, the year that's ending now the military takes 26% of the budgetary allocation and if its share of the annual debt repayment which is added to it which we take for military purchases then its share of the annual budget allocation comes to nearly 50% this cannot pakistan cannot sustain this massive outlay on the bridge it's two four star generals the army chief and a chairman joint chiefs of staff committee who does nothing but twiddle his toes reads the newspapers has absolutely nothing to do 27 lieutenant general 144 major general live a life of luxury putting to shame the millers and billionaires of the west you just have to enter their homes and their offices and you will know what they do you just have to figure find out where their children study in the best universities in the eaters and harrows of the uk and you will find out how they can afford this lifestyle even though their pays are very mediocre because their perks and privileges are so high and the command fund money which is corrupt money is so huge which no one can challenge the net result is a very corrupt bankrupt pakistan with extremely weak state institutions on the civilian side especially the judiciary the executive the police conversely the army has become its strongest institution with no one can challenge their power physical power obviously not but otherwise their state power and the network of the intelligence the inter service intelligence which exists in every single civilian sect state institution whether it's at the division level whether it's at the district level whether it's in the provincial government or in the federal government every state 
body, department, government institution has an ISA man embedded who tells them what to do, including people in courts. The Pakistan truly needs a country to survive, in this case, Pakistan. Pakistan, let me just tell you how much aid Pakistan has received since partition. Since partition, 1947, Pakistan has received nearly $80 billion in aid from the U.S. in various forms of chips. It has received nearly $70 billion in aids and loans from China, most recently on the CPAC. It has had 22, we're into our 33rd IMF program, the International Foundry Fund, uh, approximately $20 billion from there. Aid from other countries like Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, Qatar, Kuwait, UK, Germany, France, Japan, Australia, others is in excess of $30 billion. In total, Pakistan has received nearly $200 billion in aids, loans, and grants. This is in addition to its own exports, so it's for foreign direct investment and to the vast foreign exchange that the Pakistani expatriate population living in the Middle East, Europe, and, 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 and the USA send back to Pakistan. Yet, today Pakistan is bankrupt. Its foreign exchange reserves are less than $4 billion. It does not even have reserves to cover a week's or two weeks uh, import. Inflation is nearly 50%. Over 10 million jobs have been lost. The booming textile sector, the auto sector, the cement sector, the large scale manufacturing sector are dead since April 2022 when PM Imran's government was removed. If you want to see devastation in less than a year, you just have to look at Pakistan. Imran was the first civilian prime minister who attempted to break this mafia-like elite capture of Pakistan between the generals and the corrupt politicians and the corrupt big business and reign in the rampant corruption and bring to justice the Sharif brothers, Nawaz Sharif, the absconding criminal living in the UK, and Shabazz Sharif, the current prime minister, who was going to be indicted a day before uh, he became prime minister for 20 billion rupees of embezzlement, money laundering, him, his son, and his son-in-law. And the leader of the Pakistan People's Party, the infamous Mr. 10% of Asif Zadari. It is conservatively estimated that between these two families, over $15 billion of Pakistani money has been corrupted, has, uh, has been looted and embezzled by these two families through corruption. What else did PM Imran do? For the first time, PM Imran Khan challenged this elite capture, and he also wanted to pursue an independent foreign policy allied to its own geopolitical realities, its geoeconomic realities, its geostrategic realities, based on where we are located. In effect, and as a consequence, he took on the two most powerful forces any political leader in Pakistan could. He took on a very powerful and a very corrupt, powerful military of the Pakistan army. And he took on the USA, who desperately wanted and still want to move Pakistan away from China, denuclearize its nuclear weapon program, mend ties with India, change its stance on Indian occupied Kashmir, and recognize Israel. There is a very largely held common perception, deeply held, that if you want Pakistan as an ally, all you need is to have the army chief on your side, Bruce Riedel. Uh, a very famous uh, Pakistan watcher and considered an expert says all you have to do is to bribe a few Pakistani generals. Also, there is a strong belief that the U.S. administration or elements within the U.S. State Department in secret parlays with the former army chief General Kamar Javed Bajwa gave the go ahead to him to remove PM Imran's government, which was uh, reeling under inflationary pressures. But despite that, had achieved an annual growth rate of 6% despite COVID, despite all that had happened to the global supply chain, had achieved the highest tax collection in the entire history of Pakistan, achieved the highest level of exports, highest level of foreign direct investment, highest level of foreign exchange remittances from overseas Pakistanis, and the highest ever increases in large scale manufacturing and agricultural output. Pakistan was a poster boy of a 
poster boy country of a country coming out of a very damaged economy into a becoming a prosperous economy and the axe fell on april 9 2022 in a ham-handed vote of no confidence with the army and its isi inter-service intelligence goons herding prime minister imran's coalition partners away from him and towards this the corrupt cabal of politicians uh, comprising these two parties the Muslim League and the People's Party, and also attempting to break away many of his own legislators through massive bribes and threats. PM Imran's government was overthrown in a vote of no confidence on 9th April. At the time of the military coup, as I would call it, a constitutional military coup, Prime Minister Imran had governments at the federal level, two of the four provinces, the special territory of Gilgit, Baltistan, and in the Azad Jammu and Kashmir, the liberated part of Kashmir, which is not under Indian occupation. In fact, of the seven entities in Pakistan, five were uh, in PM Imran's party ruled them, and two were with uh, uh, one was a coalition government in Balochistan, and the last was with the People's Party, uh, Asif Zadari's People's Party, in, in absolute completely devastated province where, where there, there's no such thing as governance and rule of law. PM Imran subsequently dissolved two of the assemblies that he uh, that, that his party was in power in, in Punjab in the KPK, and elections have to be held in 90 days, which, as we speak now, the government is refusing to hold, or the election commission is refusing to hold on the pretext of law and order, a security situation that may be emerging. We don't have enough manpower. The Pakistan army is refusing to provide us resources and funds, and the government is refusing to give us funds. Since April 2022, Pakistan has been in this grip of reign of terror by the current army chief, General Asim Munir, and his DGISI, and the entire uh, generals that are with General Asim Munir. Lawyers, journalists, political workers are being routinely picked up without warrants, imprisoned, and, and, and abducted. As I write, one very prominent journalist, a bureau chief of one of Pakistan's largest media houses, Bol, Sadiq Jan, was illegally abducted by plainclothes people for 17 hours. No one knew where he was. And, and then he, he was presented with a cooked up charge of doing something at a protest when M PM Imran was uh, uh, vis was was uh, appearing for his hearing on 18th August simply because he had recorded a video of plain clothes people with handcuffs being allowed to enter the uh, uh, the judicial com complex where they were planning to arrest or assassinate Imran. Another lawyer from uh, PM Imran's party, Hassan Niazi, has also been picked up in a similar fashion, similar cooked up charges. We don't know what's happening. Pakistan's lower judiciary is very weak and completely under the brutal threats and coercion or corrupt of the military and the ISI and routinely accepts false cases and passes absolutely uh, kangaroo court type punishments. Even my own two sons who've never not been in Pakistan, one hasn't been in Pakistan for six years, the other hasn't been in Pakistan for four, have been charged under some cooked up case last year and they're not even there. Uh, I mean, I have been, uh, six sedition cases allegedly have been, uh, I've been told, have been filed against me for which the death, uh, the, the, the sentence is death. The Superior Judiciary, on the other hand, the Supreme Court and the Provincial High Courts have started to show some muscle and they assert their independence and they've started to issue uh, orders which are against what the military-backed regime and the military is doing, but they're being disdainfully discarded and thrown in the dustbin. Let's see what happens. Net-net is this, that the military regime and the generals and Asimuni specifically are adamant in disqualifying, detaining, and imprisoning PM Imran Khan, or in a worst case scenario, assassinate him uh, in a completely cooked up uh, encounter, or disqualify him in a false case in a, in a kangaroo court. The worst case scenario is assassination. <clears throat> Yesterday, this military backed regime has decided 
that elections will all be held together and they will only be held after the census takes place and after census electoral rolls, which means the polls that the Supreme Court had said will be held in the provinces of KP and Punjab in April and May are, no, are not going to be held. It's a complete flouting. Their orders, all polls and surveys indicate that more than 80% of Pakistanis support PM Imran and they want a fair and free election as defined by the constitution and the law of the land and that he and his party will win a landslide, most likely two thirds a majority, if not a three fourth. And this is what the generals and the corrupt kleptocratic, kleptocratic mafia like Cabal fear who have been looting this country for 65 years. Because what awaits Pakistan were PM Imran and if PM Imran and inshallah PM Imran will be elected is a massive reform agenda which will change the entire landscape of Pakistan politically whether they want a parliamentary form or a, uh, or a, or a, cons or a presidential form, whether you know, they want to make major changes in the constitution, how do you uh, rein in the unchecked, unbridled, unaccountable power of the army chief, how do you stop this massive corruption that has creeped in and all state institutions, including the army, the judiciary, the police, the bureaucracy, What do? You, how do you reform all these institutions, how do you make them subservient to civilian law authority? How do you make sure that rule of law prevails in Pakistan? How do you make sure that the resources of this country are spent where they should be spent and not siphoned away by a small cabal of military generals and corrupt politicians? This is what they are fearing. So <clears throat> the biggest challenge Pakistan has had that all its laws, including its laws that govern the military, the bureaucracy, the police date back to the English colonial uh, laws of 1860 and later 1880, 1890. This is a massive reform agenda for Pakistan and it will break the back of the military generals, the corrupt military generals and the corrupt policy. Having said that, if the military generals and their back civilian backed administration attempt to disqualify Imran or assassinate him and try and scuttle elections, the following will happen. The country will erupt into an orgy of violence, bloodshed, widespread anarchy, looting, plunder, murder and genocide. Mark my words, this will happen. The military so far is united, but once that happens, it will split. So will the police, so will the rangers, so will all paramilitary forces. This will further increase violence and likely erupt into a full-scale civil war. India, Iran and Afghanistan will be drawn into the fray by separatist movements, terrorists and people who do not want a stable uh, and strong Pakistan. Pakistan's nuclear assets will come under severe threat as central government control and the army's control loses its grip on the country. This is a very real, this is a very real, this is a very real and nightmarish scenario which will likely unfold. I've been watching this for years and I'm telling you this is a very likely scenario to happen. The US administration especially must understand that the peace of the world and the Middle East and South Asia is in a free democratic Pakistan under rule of law free of corruption and the elite capture of military generals and corrupt politicians and in a man and in an honorable man like PM Imran who holds no grudges against anyone, who is not a terrorist as he's made out to be, who is not an obscurantist, uh, narrow-minded person that he's made out to be. He's a man of great vision. He will be the best leader for the West, for the US, for Western Europe, and for everybody else. That phase of history that uh, the US used to use to control countries as they did in South America and in Pakistan through military generals and corrupt, pliable politicians, I'm afraid is over. So if the world and especially the US does not want its interests and security threatened in the Middle East, in South Asia, and even in Mormon, 
apple pie, mainland USA and mainland Europe and mainland Canada where I live. They should put all their efforts and influence and energies in stopping Armageddon, ensuring that free and fair elections are held in Pakistan. Stop attempting to foist good for nothing wimps like Bilawal, Zardari's son and Maryam, Nawaz Sharif's daughter on Pakistan. If you like them so much, we'll be more than happy to give them to you in the US. Please make have them elected as a congressperson, have them elected as a governor, and then have them elected as the president of the United States. Good luck to you. In conclusion, the world must condemn the fascism, totalitarianism, and brutality, and the illegal abduction and Im imprisonment and custodial torture, physical abuse, and murder of political leaders, journalists, political workers, and those oppo opposing the acts of the state terrorism in Pakistan. The world, especially the US, must not extend its overt and covert support to a corrupt army chief, General Asim Munir, and his cabal of generals, who himself is an illegal op occupant of that office, and his DG ISI, General Nadeem Anjum, and his DG internal wing, General Faisal Nasir, who has unleashed this reign of terror in Pakistan, as was done by his predecessor, General Kamar Javed Bajwa. The world community, the USA, Canada, Europe, the UN must declare General Kamar Javed Bajra, General Asim Muni, the current army chief, General Nadeem Anjum, and General Faisal Nasir, the DG counterintelligence, guilty of crimes against humanity, of custodial torture of Senator Azam Sawathi, of Dr. Shabazz Gale, and countless others about whom we do not know, and the two attempted assassinations on Prime Minister Imran Khan. Isn't it an irony? that Prime Minister Imran Khan could not file a first information report in the province of Punjab at a time when the first attempted assassination was made against him, when his own party was in power to name the people he thought were behind his assassination. Such is the power of the Pakistan army generals. In the end, let me tell you, Pakistan is not Egypt, Pakistan is not Iraq, is not Syria, is not Libya, is not Sukarno's Indonesia, and not Bang Bang Marcus's Philippines. We are Pakistanis. If we go under, we will not go under easy. We will take many more with us, and many more will go with us, and not many in this world will live to tell the tale. This is a horrific, this is a nation of 243 million people. 70% of its population is under the age of 30. It is angry, it is passionate, it is violent. It will rise, the orgy of violence and the fire will engulf many countries. Please, do not let this happen to Pakistan and the region and the world. To me and to most thinking Pakistanis, the writing is on the wall. It is my plea to everyone, do not let Armageddon happen. Please share this talk with your, with your legislators, with people in your country, whether you're in America or Canada or Europe or wherever you are, to make sure that free and fair elections in Pakistan are held so Pakistan becomes a stable, prosperous country and joins this community of nations. Thank you very much. I leave you now. I hope this was an interesting uh, insight about what Pakistan is going through and what can possibly happen if things are not uh, checked in time. Thank you very much. Ilahi Amin. Assalamu alaikum. Khuda Hafiz.